BASF Plant Health 2020 Video Series, Advanced Stress Mitigation and Unmatched Disease Control, Validated with On-Farm Trials. Hi, I'm Kurt Martins, BASF Tech Service Rep, covering Eastern Iowa and Western Illinois. Today I'm in Northeast Iowa near the town of Nashua, looking at some soybeans and talking about sclerotinia stem rot, also known as white mold in soybeans. Now this is a common fungal disease that we see here across the Midwest, especially in the part of the Midwest that I cover here in Eastern Iowa. Now this can be a devastating disease. If we get severe enough infections, we can possibly lose 40 to 50% of our yield potential. Infected plants will show white mycelia growth on the stem of the plant near the node where the infection took place. Now this infection produces sclerotia. This is the dark little structure that you see on the stem of the plant. They will also grow inside the stem of the plant. These sclerotia are the survival structures of the disease, which allow it to overwinter here in our area. In the spring, a little mushroom type structure called an apothecia will protrude out of this sclerotia, which then releases millions of spores into the air. Under cool and wet conditions, along with dead plant tissue, these spores will colonize. Now senescing soybean flowers, so right after R1, or when R1 is wrapping up and those soybean flowers start to senesce, this provides a perfect source of dead tissue for these spores to colonize on. The perfect conditions of cool and moist weather, that's when the infection first takes place. So in a soybean's life, infection usually occurs around R1, so that's the beginning of flowering. So typically, R1 begins here in Northeast Iowa around late June, 1st of July. So that's when our ta infection takes place. So if we see that we do have wet and cool conditions during that time frame, and a history of white mold in the field, we've got a good chance that we're probably gonna see white mold infection take place later on in the season. So we, we have to remember that the sclerotia will be viable in the soil for up to 10 years. So this is a long-term problem that we'll have to start managing for. So number one in our management decisions. Number one, variety selection. You need to choose a soybean variety that has a good tolerance to white mold infection. This is key. Now, there are no varieties that have complete resistance to white mold, so we need to incorporate some other practices. Like, number two, we need to avoid moving the sclerotia from field to field. Now, you, we, there's a lot of ways it does move, but the, probably the two most common are going to be with harvest equipment and tillage equipment. We need to reduce the movement of the sclerotia so we don't infect other fields that we're farming. Number three, we need to consider planting wider row soybeans. 30 inch row soybeans is very common in this area. What this allows to happen in the field is for better airflow through the canopy of that soybean field. If we've got better airflow through that canopy, then we're gonna have the, 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 those flowers are gonna be drier and that's gonna help prevent some of that infection. It's not gonna stop it, but it does seem to help it sometimes. Now fourth, what are our chemi chemical control options? Well, we wanna look at maybe doing a two-pass fungicide uh, program for, for white mold control. Our program is using eight ounces of Endura fungicide at R1 timing. Now this is gonna lay a preventative foundation for control of that early white mold infection. Like I said, takes place around that R1 time frame or the beginning of bloom and that's when our timing is. So when I start seeing those first flowers in the field, that's when I want that application of Endura to go out. We will then follow it up with an application of four ounces of Preaxor at the R3 timing. This is gonna help us control some of those other foliar diseases like septoria and frog eye leaf spot, and it's gonna help boost that plant, giving it a little bit better plant health to finish out the reproductive stages, maybe help fend off some of those later white mold uh, infections as well. To learn more about how BASF plant health fungicides perform in your backyard, visit RevXFields.com. Experience the difference.